Next is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Hi everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Greg Corey, um, who is Director of Support at um, FreeWave, will be presenting today. Um, Greg's going to go over FreeWave's IIoT platform and um, discuss the applications where it can be used. Um, please send your questions for Greg in your chat window during the webinar anytime. Um, Greg's going to answer the questions at the end. Greg, you ready to go? I'm ready to go. All right, it's all yours. Great. Thanks for introducing the webinar, Elaine, and thanks for having us today. Today's topic is adding network value with IIoT computing, or the Industrial Internet of Things. To kick off that conversation, we're going to give you a little bit of background on who FreeWave is as a company. So we've been around for 26 years now, providing wireless solutions to industrial environments, typically in the machine-to-machine application space. We currently have over 5,000 customers worldwide. And what made FreeWave famous as a company is long-range wireless connectivity for process-related industries that are in challenging RF environments. And at the time of this webinar, we currently have maybe 1.2 or 1.3 million wireless modules installed in the field today. We started our company in Boulder, Colorado, and that's where we still continue to exist, design, manufacture, and test our products. So we've been in the machine-to-machine -machine wireless space for many years, and the next evolution of freeway radios is to add edge capability. So instead of just being a wireless pipe for data that's transmitted and received, we're gonna add intelligence to be able to interact with that data at the edge of our last mile networks. Here's a sampling of some applications that FreeWave has done. And uh, I have a saying, FreeWave is everywhere in the air. I can guarantee you at some point in your life, you've been in the signal path of a FreeWave wireless network. So we do uh, ice shelf monitoring in Antarctica. We have drones that are using to fight wildfires. Uh, oil and gas is one of our biggest markets for monitoring process control and getting data from those industrial field devices. We also do smart ag, manufacturing, anywhere there's a need for remote operations. So we serve traditional uh, markets that are underserved, we'll say, by the current offering of wireless connectivity. Maybe there isn't fiber to that location, maybe there isn't any cell phone signal, um, and maybe it's just a little bit out of range of the standard network. That's where FreeWave comes in with the last mile of connectivity. Next up, we're going to talk about leading to the edge, so how we're evolving as a company and our wireless networks to serve next generation applications. So there's a need for this change. Wireless industrial networks have been essentially operating the same way uh, for the past 20 to 30 years, and it's time to evolve to add capability to that. We expect a lot out of our phones today. Um, we don't just use phones to send and receive calls anymore. They run applications, they display data, and we're gonna be adding that capability to industrial radios. In talking about that, the first thing we're going to cover is IIoT and comparing it to SCADA. So if you're not familiar with SCADA, that stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. And that's a term that's been around for about 30 years now and it involves the remote monitoring and control of processes over a wider uh, physical location or a large system. And one of the challenges of traditional SCADA is that a lot of the hardware devices and their associated protocols are proprietary. And that poses a difficulty when we're connecting more sensors, we're connecting field applications to uh, cloud-based services. So in moving from SCADA to the industrial 
internet of things, we're gonna have a need to transform those proprietary systems to make them more interoperable. Next is the security aspect. So uh, security has been somewhat lacking, to say the least, in traditional SCADA. And it's typically involved uh, physically separating networks to prevent access. Well, in an interconnected world where we have you know, communication from sensor to server uh, somewhere in the cloud, there can't be that physical separation that there once was. So we're going to need to add additional security features like encryption. Another downside of traditional SCADA and where it's falling short is the siloed data access. So there's access for users that need to look at that data and they need to be on site to access that. They need to be part of that network. We need to transition that to a managed access for all users. So even though we're opening them up, opening up more of the network, for access, we need to manage that in a way to provide proper permissions. And lastly is bridging the gap between IT and OT. So information technology and operations technology. In a lot of companies, there's a separation between the IT group and the people who are monitoring and controlling these processes over a wider system. And they sometimes work against each other and using IIoT or wider platforms, we can bring those two groups together. So let's take a look at an example of what we're getting today with traditional SCADA. And we're looking at really critical data only. So for example, what is the temperature of a process? What is the pressure? and should we turn it off if these values meet a specific range. So very simple operational data here, and here's an interesting statistic that 80 to 95% of data generated by machines is still stranded in the field. So we have these data points available in the field, but we're not leveraging them for our operations and for the greater picture of our companies because we can't retrieve that data from the field. We're only focused on mission critical data points here. So what we could be getting, and let's go ahead and flip to that, is a bunch of other data points that could be critical to our business operations. So we could keep track of and run reports on who calibrated a specific sensor. Maybe we're seeing a reoccurring issue with a deployment of field devices that were installed by a specific person. Maybe we want to ask, you know, how long has the sensor been in the field? There could be an installed date tag that is remotely retrievable, and we can tell when we're going to need to replace things. Other things we can look at, when was the sensor calibrated? You know, what is the pressure? Um, we could also look at the financial aspects, what's the operational efficiency of different field devices, and lastly, the security aspect, running security audits on field devices. So with traditional SCADA, it's somewhat limiting. Moving to IIoT, where there's more interconnectivity, there's more access to data, we can leverage that to get more value out of our networks. Let's take a look here in what's enabled, so the bigger picture of how we use that data. One of those things is preventative maintenance. So we can look at when something was installed, and we can look at the average lifespan of that device and already have replacements ordered as we know they would need to come up on that basis. Also predictive analytics, and there are a number of companies out there today that are developing models for predictive analytics. So you can look at specific data points and then see when something fails based upon other data points surrounding that event. Uh, an example of that that I've seen in the field is vibration monitoring for wind turbines. So it's extremely costly to do maintenance on wind turbines because it usually involves a crane um, to replace parts. So they monitor different vibrations within inside the wind turbine 
to determine if there's going to be a fault and what predictive maintenance they could perform to prevent that. Lastly is uh, process optimization. So are we doing the best we can with the hardware and the personnel resources we have available? And eking out any inefficiencies in a system can yield big gains. So if we can get you know, 10 to 20% reduced production waste in an oil and gas environment, that is significant cost savings for the organization. So FreeWave can help fulfill the promises of IIoT. And the first way in which we can do that is help customers move to a more interoperable protocol, that being MQTT. The traditional SCADA networks that we discussed, they rely on a pull response protocol in which we have to ask a device for information and it responds. If that value doesn't change on that device and we ask it every minute, we're wasting precious network resources to get that data even though it hasn't changed. So with a newer protocol like MQTT, we can publish from the edge only when that value changes, saving bandwidth on lower bandwidth networks. And FreeWave has partnered with a number of software companies that can convert any industrial protocol essentially to something more interoperable like MQTT. Next is decouple devices from applications. So when you have a proprietary device, sometimes there's a proprietary application that goes along with that. And using an interoperable protocol, you can mix and match your hardware or decouple those applications. Next is creating different architectures. So we can set up a publish subscribe architecture that enables interoperability. So these three points are related here and it involves just making the system smarter and eking out those inefficiencies that cost us time and money and strand data in the field. What this looks like from a big picture perspective here. Here's a high level overview. We have our gateway radio that is talking to endpoints that are connected to devices in the field. We can then publish that information to the cloud where an internet connection exists. And then different users and their associated permission levels can access that data. So we're looking at the full sensor to server architecture here using FreeWave wireless hardware. All right, in this section, let's take a look at some of the product lines themselves. So what hardware does FreeWave use to achieve these capabilities? And we've been developing and manufacturing wireless data transceivers for over 20 years now. The first three points about FreeWave's product portfolio is the enclosure board level or radio module form factors. So essentially, we have every customer vertical covered there. We have OEM partners that integrate our radio into their products. We have people that wanna save some money with just going with a board level solution. And then we also have customers that require a fully enclosed, rugged industrial radio device. So we have all three of those covered. And there's a number of partners of ours that are using our OEM embedded modules. So there's applications out there that are rebranded and it's actually FreeWave Wireless um, underneath the hood there. We can move any type of data. So serial, ethernet, IO, we have pretty much every industrial interface covered. Any location, we have radios that operate all along in the harsh winters of North Dakota. We also have networks in the Middle East. We have networks in Antarctica. So FreeWave truly is a global company that is able to operate under any condition. As I noted, any interface there, serial, ethernet, or IO. So we're extremely flexible within our hardware offering about in what applications we can serve. All right, looking at uh, the first part of our portfolio here is our edge sensing. 
So we have a number of wireless sensors. So we can do digital inputs, analog inputs. We can do pressure. Some of our edge sensing devices are sensor agnostic, meaning you can connect whatever sensor you'd like. And some of those products actually have sensors built into them. And they are battery and solar powered for truly wireless capability because they don't require a, an external power source. Next on the edge computing side here is the ZoomIQ application environment. So ZoomIQ is access to the operating system on the radio that allows you to develop and run applications in our Linux environment. So it's an industrial radio that we've made smart by adding a real operating system that's used in hundreds of thousands of applications every day. On the edge connectivity side of things, this is our traditional product portfolio. So currently only the ZoomLink platform has the capability to run software on top of it, but we have a long history of supporting other types of industrial radios in a number of frequencies and a number of interfaces. And we also offer uh, C1D2 certified models for specific oil and gas environments. And we still have radios operating in the field that we manufactured 20 years ago. When you purchase a free wave radio, it's designed to be an industrial application. And a lot of those radios aren't replaced due to failure, they're replaced because they were upgraded. And we still offer support for products that we manufactured 20 years ago. So taking a look at how Freewave is different as a company, uh, as I mentioned, it's a rugged design. We operate in many different corners of the earth. Uh, low power is important for a lot of our applications. Many of them are powered by solar with limited daylight hours. So we took that into consideration uh, of the design and our hardware. We have not just a radio, but an edge platform. And this is a really important concept here in that the industrial radio space has been you know, in use for over 20 to 30 years. People have been developing products that move data between industrial devices, but they've just sent and received data. They haven't actually, you know, leveraged that data at the edge of the network there. So it's not just a radio anymore. It's an entire edge platform. And it's evolved for the industrial Internet of Things. And it's doing so by allowing software to be hosted on that ZoomLink radio. And here we have a display of a number of software partners that we have engaged. So we have customers that run Ignition Edge and Ignition slash inductive automation is very well known in the industrial space. We do some applications with Amazon Web Services and we just announced a recent partnership with Autosol to do protocol conversion from industrial devices. So leveraging software at the edge opens up a lot more opportunity regarding IOT than traditional SCADA data radios have. And now we're going to take a look at some applications. So we're going to take a look at some network schematics and some use cases. First one we're going to look at here is the Sylvan Lake installation. So this is a municipal water district in Canada that uses the ZoomLink platform. And they're actually doing it with Ignition Edge at the endpoints in their network. So they take in data from a number of PLCs into the ZoomLink radio. And that radio then converts that industrial protocol and converts it to a published protocol that we then push to the main server there. And that allows the water district to have a more efficient system. It allows them to uh, essentially forklift the software capability without having to change the hardware. So if you have an older industrial device 
and you want more capability out of it, um, that often involves actually changing the device itself. With the Zoom Link and the IQ platform, you could leverage software on top of the radio to upgrade that network without actually changing the hardware device out. So obviously that's a big time and money saver there. As part of our new company mission statement, we're about life's essentials. And one of those essentials is water. So how do we conserve water usage? How do we make better decisions about water management based upon data? And free wave networks are the conduit for moving this type of data. And who this benefits is obviously everybody looking at the big picture of things. So free wave wireless networks are moving important pieces of data and interacting with important pieces of data to benefit society as a whole to make the world a smarter place. Going into detail on that on the smart water management side. So here we have an application for tank level monitoring. So looking at the um, water tanks we have here, we have a solar powered panel that probably has a number of devices in there, including a Zoom Link radio. We can attach to many different types of level sensing equipment. We can take in that level and we can publish it to the gateway, which will then publish it to the cloud there. It's important to note that free wave networks integrate with many other types of wireless technology, including Wi-Fi, LoRa, satellite, narrowband, LTE, and wired or fiber networks. Wireless networks are about having the right tool for the right type of job. And FreeWave really specializes in that last mile of connectivity. It's very common then for the gateway radio or the center of the network to be physically connected to another device that provides a different type of connectivity. Fiber is very common, uh, as I mentioned, and also cell is probably second most common. And there are some trade-offs of using cellular versus using a privately owned network like FreeWave. And they are competing services, but they also work in conjunction with each other. So you can use FreeWave radios to do that last mile of connectivity. You can use the Zoom Link or any FreeWave gateway as the data concentration point. And then you can offload that to a cellular modem, for example. That allows you to save money in the deployment because you only have to pay for one license, or not license, but subscription plan uh, for that cellular device. If you were to put a cellular device at all of these locations in this water management application, that would cost more money, obviously, because there's more subscriptions in play. If you aggregate all of that data to a Zoom link, and then offload it there, obviously you're going to be saving some money on subscriptions. The problems that this is solving is obviously there's an inefficiency if you have to drive around and look at different levels in tanks. Um, that alone, when you have to send out you know, a person to monitor a, a manual process costs time and money, and it's just not a great use of resources. So by having a smart network using free wave radios, we can retrieve that data remotely and keep more people in the office at a lower cost level. Now let's take a look at the center pivot irrigation application. So, and I actually have some personal experience in working on irrigation applications. So for irrigation, uh, specifically center pivot, uh, if you've ever obviously been, you've definitely been on a flight and looked out the window and seen those circles there throughout the landscapes of the Midwest and other agricultural areas, those circles are center pivot irrigation systems where there's a central controller that has an arm that revolves around it and creates that circular pattern um, in agricultural areas. There are a number of different data points that need to be, need to be monitored 
in those applications. So number one is the position of the arm on the center pivot. So we wanna see what compass orientation it's currently directed in. There's also fault sensors throughout the pivot arm here. So there are many different motors that help these arm move around the field there. And they need to be working in sync with each other in order to not cause some type of mechanical fault that jams the system there. They have to be operating at the same speed. And there's also other sensors, including moisture sensors, um, including positioning sensors, and a whole bunch of other different things. Using a FreeWave ZoomLink IoT solution for this, we place the FreeWave radio in the controller for the center pivot. We connect all of our sensors down the arm there. It can be wireless, it can be wired, it just depends on the sensor. And then we can offload that to a central location. So we have customers in rural Washington that have thousands of center pivots and they use a free wave radio network to get that data from the center pivots to the cloud there. Some of them are using a combination of cellular technology, as I mentioned, and that they'll pull you know, 100 or 200 center pivots into a single location and then upload that to the cloud from there. The cost saving of using a free wave network, as I mentioned, versus cellular is having owning that private network there, you don't have to pay a subscription fee for it. We simply aggregate all that data and bring it back. Leveraging some of the software capabilities on the ZoomLink platform, you could do a protocol conversion, you could do report on exceptions, so you wouldn't have to continuously pull the network to see what's going on. There are a number of advantages of using that smart platform at the edges there. Here's another application for uh, smart ag. And in this, this is a, a bigger picture for agriculture than just center pivot. So we have tractors, we have sensors in combines, we have sensors in storage bins that are looking at capacity or when a hatch was last opened or something like that. There are a number of data points that we could collect from these agricultural applications. In the past, FreeWave has partnered with uh, dairy farms for feed monitoring and also output monitoring for producing uh, milk and other types of products for the market. By putting data points in that we can monitor there, we can obviously optimize the processes that are going on. In the diagram we have here, you'll see a tractor there and that could specifically use an embedded zoom link module. As I mentioned before, we have a number of form factors for our industrial radios and we do partner with smart agricultural companies that are doing things like monitoring tractor movement or monitoring faults in machinery. And they do that by embedding one of our board level radios into those products. As I mentioned for dairy, we partner with a number of solution providers for monitoring feed and output of those industries. We also do monitoring of storage bins. So what capacity do we have left? When has the hatch been opened? Uh, and interestingly also there are some security implications there. So theft of grain uh, is an issue here in Colorado. And we do have a number of customers that do monitor if a hatch has been opened on a grain silo. So when that hatch opens, there's simply a digital contact. It publishes to the cloud and that cloud application can send out an email or text message alert that somebody has opened the grain bin there. So a number of different opportunities for smart ag there and monitoring these stranded data processes and bringing that data in and making better decisions.
Next for real-time monitoring is the oil and gas industry. So oil and gas is one of our biggest customers and currently they probably have maybe 300,000, 600,000 free wave radios out there at least. And free wave radios are used at a number of different points within the production of oil and gas. And let's take a look at just a small example of how free wave can work with oil and gas industries. And a lot of that revolves around the monitoring of pressure, of flow rate, and other processes like water injection. So we can have a network of free wave radios of endpoints that are connected to meters, that are connected to other types of sensors, and also security, which is going to be you know, obviously a hot topic as we move towards an interconnected world, we can bring all of those data points back and then publish them to the cloud. So this is probably one of the most common applications for free wave networks. We have customers in the oil and gas space that have networks with three endpoints in them. We have customers that have networks with 3,000 endpoints of specific processes they're monitoring. And for some of those specific industries like the natural gas industry, the free wave networks are transporting a very valuable piece of data. So in natural gas end to end, there are a number of players in order to get that gas out of the ground and then provide it to end customers. So usually there's somebody who owns the well and then that gas goes into a transmission line which they call midstream and then there's a uh, processing plant for that gas that extracts different gases and then provides that to the actual end customers. In a natural gas chain, there are a number of different points where that product exchanges hands, meaning there's a, a custody transfer. And when you're selling gas to a midstream company, for example, that needs to be monitored so you know how much to bill for what gas was put in that pipeline. And that's referred to specifically as custody transfer. Free wave radios are very commonly used in natural gas measurements. So at the end of the month, we gather all the data that we've retrieved over the free wave network and we do our billing to the midstream or other companies that where the gas has changed hands. So free wave networks are providing an extremely valuable piece of connectivity to these industries. I mean, we have hundreds of thousands of, of millions of dollars of product moving through these pipelines, and we need to be able to gauge that remotely and bill for it. If free wave networks weren't in place, the amount of time that you would have to spend gathering that data from the field, um, it would take weeks to months to manually gather all of this data just for one billing cycle. So free wave networks play a critical role in the nation's oil and gas infrastructure. Let's move on to the next application here. And this application actually, one of our local customers here in Boulder uh, uses this platform with free wave radios. So for smart signaling systems, we do have traffic applications where there is a free wave radio module at every intersection and it's connected to a controller that controls the signal lights for that intersection. So when I drive to work every day here in Boulder, Colorado, I'm passing through a number of different free wave wireless networks. In these applications, they can remotely make changes to lights. Like let's say we wanted to add a you know, a green light for another 10 seconds. Let's say we wanted to do fault detection. If one of the lights was out and flashing, all of this mission critical data for traffic control is passed through these free wave networks. And in the application I'm referring to specifically here in Boulder, we have about a five mile coverage range with most of our gateways. Our customer locally here is using these networks specifically for signal controllers, but there are another 
type or category of sensors that you could also bring in. So some cities, and this is part of the kind of smart cities initiative for a lot of municipalities is bringing in other types of data. So weather, for example, is there going to be high winds that could damage infrastructure? Also looking at possibly vehicle speed. Uh, there are a number of companies that specialize in traffic and, and speed cameras, as I'm sure a lot of us on the call are probably well aware of those, and that data needs to be moved also. The advantage of using a wireless solution compared to wired is there's no need for physical trenching of wire. So if there weren't freeway wireless networks for these applications, specifically in traffic, you would have to have a connection at every intersection. And there are fiber uh, connections in a lot of these locations, but once you go down a couple streets, they may not have a cable run to that location. So as I mentioned earlier, freeway wireless networks aren't a replacement for other types of communication technologies, but they are used in conjunction. And it's all about selecting the right tool for the right type of job in wireless. The value that this offers in this application of using a free wave network, obviously reducing traffic congestion, so the better control and monitoring we have over our signaling systems, the better the impact for all the drivers on the road. Um, also reducing pollution. So if there's a traffic sensor and traffic is backed up, we can then make a database decision to extend this turning lane or turn this light off to reroute traffic, which reduces the number of idling cars. So the big picture of free wave networks and the value that they offer, again, it's all about improving life on earth for everybody by making the world a smarter place. The better we can retrieve this stranded data from the field, the better the decisions we're gonna be able to make, the more money we're gonna save, and Overall, we're going to have a more prosperous society. And oh, looks like it's not moving here. There we go. So in conclusion, why use freeway products? And the first point of that is the industrial strength. Throughout this webinar, I've talked about many different applications that are in remote, rugged locations, they have extreme operating temperatures. Um, the amount of sunlight for solar powered applications is, is very low. So all of that revolves around being uh, an industrial strong device. And FreeWave has taken all of those considerations for our applications into the development of the product. Next is the edge devolved. So it's no longer just a radio. There are a lot of other companies out there that provide machine-to-machine -machine communications, but a lot of those companies are just sending and receiving data. There's no other value than being that invisible transport layer. We are leveraging the hardware on our products to do more. As I mentioned earlier, we expect a lot from our smartphones today. You know, we just don't use them for sending and receiving data. There's software that we're running on there. There's sensors. And the industrial radio market can do the same by leveraging hardware we have at the edge of the networks. Since we already have this hardware in the field, we might as well use that hardware to run software um, to optimize processes even further. Next bullet point here is the ease of use. So we have a number of software solutions for managing free wave networks, for detecting problems, for detecting points of optimization for the network, and that all revolves around ease of use. Ease of use is extremely important in this day and age in technology. Um, we expect a lot from products where there's pretty much, we interact with you know, hundreds of software platforms per day as we do our daily jobs and surf the web and use our smartphones. Um, so people have become accustomed to using software that is easy to use. And admittedly, the industrial space hasn't really kept up with that trend. There's powerful software out there, 
but it may not be easy to use for the average Joe. So when we're developing our hardware and software platforms, that is something that we take into account when doing our UI UX design. A really important point for me personally with FreeWave is the responsiveness. So I run our customer support team here in Boulder and we do answer the phone um, unlike other companies in the industrial space. And our time to answer is generally under 30 seconds uh, if you give us a call during normal business hours. And that really sets us apart from other companies. If you've ever had to call into a large conglomerate that maybe has a hundred different product lines, you have to go through a number of different menus and maybe you'll leave a voicemail to somebody, maybe they'll call you back, maybe they won't. Um, our responsiveness is really important to us. Our networks are moving really important and valuable pieces of data. And when you drive to a remote location and something's not working, you need immediate support to restore your operations. So that's all part of the customer experience in dealing with FreeWave. The reliability aspect, so this is tied to the industrial strength of the product, our reliability. We've invested a significant amount of capital uh, over the past five years in our system test team. So when we release a product, uh, hardware or firmware, it probably has over 300,000 tests run against it. That's the average number that we run and we have a number of customer applications that we set up. Um, we test for runtime, we test for specific bugs. We do everything in our power to ensure that when our customers get a product from Prewave, that it's going to work for the entire lifespan um, of that application. And that is an import important aspect of working in the industrial space. There are a lot of companies out there that will use their customers as testing grounds for hardware or firmware. They develop something that somewhat works, they toss it over the fence, and then they depend on their customers to tell them what's wrong with it. We've taken the other approach where we do absolutely everything in our power to ensure that our customers aren't going to have problems in the field. Lastly on this slide here are, we are subject matter experts. When it comes to wireless networks, when it comes to moving machine data. Uh, this is something we've been doing for 26 years now. We have solutions for most problems involving connectivity at the edge. And if we don't have a solution, we can recommend where to look in the right direction. And that brings us to the end of our webinar today. I wanna thank everybody for attending on the phone there. And I wanna open this up to any questions you may have. So I'm gonna pull up the screen here and we'll check the questions. Okay, and I'm just reading through this now. Okay, and one of the questions here, actually we just have one question right now. And the note says, it seems like the convergence of IT and OT networks would open up more security threats as mobile devices and Wi-Fi networks grow and OT networks become more exploitable. How is FreeWave evaluating these increased security threats? So we do have a group at FreeWave that is specifically dedicated to evaluating potential security threats um, with our products and there are a number of different precautions we take. So the first thing is the physical access. The first layer in security is physical. And in a lot of these remote situations, there, you know, there could be physical access to the box. Um, so we do have software locks in place so somebody can't just directly plug in and you know, reconfigure it or add a radio that's unauthorized to the network. So we look at the physical layer, we look at the software configuration, so there's authentication needed to make any changes to our products. When we're moving data across wireless links, uh, that data is encrypted. It's also a frequency hopping spread spectrum radio, um, which would be 
very difficult to reverse engineer to interrupt that, uh, that data, either with a denial of service or to do a man in the middle attack and intercept that. And then when it comes to the overall management of networks, there isn't a simple one size solution fits all. So there's a freeway wireless network, you know, there's a device, there could be a cell modem, there could be a cloud application. So, you know, as you noted, there's a lot more points of connectivity and a lot more opportunities for security flaws to be exploitable. But here at Freewave, we believe that the security threats can be managed and the benefits of using a greater interconnected system greatly outweigh the potential security threats. So the security threats can be managed and as long as that's managed, the benefits of an interconnected system outweigh the cost of development to deal with those specific security threats. Okay, do we have any other questions? Great question, by the way, there. And security is a hot topic that's on everybody's mind recently. And, uh, you know, I think that's a positive shift for the industry. But the industrial space has relied a lot on the uh, security through obscurity <laughs> principle in that, you know, people just don't really know about these types of proprietary networks. So that offers a level of security, which we know is a fallacy. Um, people will figure stuff out. So the more focus we put on security, I think the better for everybody uh, in the industry here. Okay, uh, any other, oh, looks like we have another question. And I'm just having trouble with my screen here. It's really small. Let me... Okay, here we go. Next question is, can you describe the application environment describing how to implement some custom functionality? Uh, let's see here. Sorry about the delay here. It's not allowing me to scroll for some reason. So I can't see the rest of the question for some reason, but... Hey, Greg, do you want me to, to read it off to you? Yeah, that would be great. Thanks, Elaine. Um, so the question in, in its entirety, can you describe the application environment describing how to implement some custom functionality? Is there specific programming languages that are supported? Great, uh, great question. So for development, it is a Debian-based Linux environment, and we do include some basic compilers uh, for C with our base installation. But we have customers that code in JavaScript. Uh, Python is really common. I mean, you can write in C. If it can be supported in a Debian Linux environment, it can be supported on a Zoomlink radio. So that pretty much includes most programming languages, as long as it can run within our hardware um, constraints. So, you know, obviously it's not a water-cooled server that has unlimited RAM, uh, but for most industrial applications, the hardware will support whatever development language you want to use. Great, and next question here, and I can, I can actually see this one this time. Does FreeWave deliver edge compute solutions in non-industrial enterprise environments as well? So we do target the industrial market specifically. Um, that's where we've been focused for the last 26 years. But you can use our edge computers in any environment. It doesn't have to be industrial. Um, by the way, I do want to mention that the ZoomLink platform, it's available as a radio that can double as an edge computer. And we also offer just an edge computing product only. And yeah, it doesn't have to be industrial. You could essentially use that in any application where you have a need for a low power, um, small form factor, rugged device. Great, thanks for that question. Okay, do we have any uh, other questions here? Um, another one came in. I'll just I'll read it off to you. It's 
kind of more of a comment. I don't know if it's a question. Um, he writes, very interested in embedding code into the Zoom link. Okay, great. Yeah, we can uh, get your contact details from the webinar here and we can uh, put you in contact with one of our developers that can help get you started on the Zoom link uh, platform. Okay, any more questions for, for Greg? All right, Greg, I think that's I think that's it for the questions. Unless you have anything else. Uh no, I, I think we're pretty good on that. Uh so if there are no more questions, I wanna thank everybody for attending today. So my contact details are here in the last slide. Feel free to send me an email if you have any questions on the topics we covered. And uh yeah, it was it was great talking with you guys today. Greg, thank you. Um, thank you, everyone who's um, in attendance here. And we will send um, a copy of the slides and a recording uh, within the next day or two um, to you by email. Thank you very much. Greg, thank you. Thank you.